And I'm the presenter, I'm Louis Lau, I'm the head of research for M Plus Online. And uh, I think everyone would be wondering um, what can we really do uh, during this uh, quarter itself. And But before we go into that, maybe we can share with you uh, on some things that uh, new users uh, can actually look out for. Because um, for new users that is uh, coming, tagging along with uh, M Plus Online, uh, first of all, you need to have an account registered, registered under us. So you can go to registration.mplusonline.com and also uh, you can uh, you can look out for our M Plus uh, blog as well. We always uh, post our um, technical reports or even our fundamental coverage reports in that segment. Uh, so mplusonline.com uh, slash blog would be uh, part of it. And thirdly, you can actually look out for our Market Pulse uh, daily report. This is uh, done by our research members, research team. And uh, this is to give you some updates about what the market is doing uh, right now. And hopefully what, uh, what is the anticipation of um, the market moving forward. So we also have the weekly market update. Uh, this is um, done uh, using the M plus WIS uh, Pro. And uh, that is our one of the tools that uh, used by most of the traders out there and to make a decision on buy or sell entry. Uh, basically, uh, that would trigger you at that point of time, what are the signals being alerted uh, throughout the day. So our weekly market update will uh, be telling you about um, what, how do we use M plus Wish Pro and things like that. So uh, next would be weekly bites. Uh, every Wednesday, we always have this a short little two to three minutes update of the market and also uh, to tell you about uh, what is what has happened in the previous uh, week and also what is the anticipation of the upcoming um, few days. Um, this weekly bites is uh, done by our research team as well and this uh, weekly bites is just for people that maybe doesn't want to uh, go through our reports then uh, you can use these weekly bites as one of the uh, tools uh, to assist you just to listen by listening to uh, what we have to uh, what we have to say throughout this week and uh, you will, you will be able to uh, capture some ideas on uh, on the market okay so that is being published every wednesday 6 p.m and do subscribe to our youtube channel because uh, we just recently uh, launched our m plus online tv and uh, the address is youtube.com slash c slash m plus online tv and if you have any other uh, inquiries uh, do contact us at support at m plus online.com okay so just uh, hang on with me with another slide here um, so this is our current campaign promotion so uh, basically you can invest in sharia uh, compliant counters and then the top 15 participating retail investors who have the highest total traded value on Busa Malaysia I platform during the campaign period will win a prize within the promo period. Okay, terms and condition apply. Uh, this is only for this month, first of April until uh, sorry uh, for the next three months, April until June. And okay, if you have more uh, interest into uh, this, you can actually look out for uh, in uh, in our mplusonline.com website. Okay, so. Just um, do some housekeeping here. Uh, just disclaimer, uh, this slide is prepared by myself and also uh, we, are, you, uh, we are presenting this to uh, share the knowledge on in, uh, investing and also trading as well. I think uh, most of uh, the participants here, if you are a trader, please put in T, T, T for trader. And you are, if you are investors, you just put it I, okay? So let me see how many of you are traders and how many of you are investors or you are both, then you can put B, okay? So, um, so anything that uh, you, you need uh, to understand more, you can actually email me as well as uh, to look out for your brokers and your brokers will tell you what to buy and what to sell. And so please uh, consult your investment advisor before making any investment decision, okay? So that's about it. And so today's agenda is talking about the outlook of uh, second quarter. Um, I think uh, most of the people out there will definitely uh, have gone through a very um, dire situation in uh, first quarter. Because why? Because uh, it is in uh, 
it is after the glove rally, okay? And the tech counters has rallied in um, January, and then it fizzed off uh, throughout this particular March. And I think most of you, if you didn't sell in February, then in March itself, most likely you will be suffering some of the losses. Uh, I wouldn't say a, a lot of losses because you might be uh, gaining from the uh, glove and also tech rally uh, in the past one year. So uh, right now it's just a time to uh, you know consolidate after the February reporting season. What is what are the people what what is the uh, the traders out there uh, looking for? What are the anticipation out there? Uh, so these are some of the things that we have to bring out bring up uh, today in today's uh, topic. Okay, so I'll go through the COVID nineteen situation. I, I guess everyone would know, and uh, most of the people out there is just uh, couldn't be bothered anymore because they want to restart and resume their business activities, and that is why uh, COVID nineteen situation seems like it's important. But at the same time, it is also not as important as March last year. Okay, if you agree with me, I, I think uh, this this is the case right now uh, because we don't look at the numbers anymore. We look into how we can break the chain. We look into how we can um, restart our economy and what is the uh, areas that we have to look out for. And one thing I, I always look at uh, during this situation is the mobility trend. Uh, this is very important because we want to understand whether we are already, uh, you know, uh, having the uh, people out there uh, going to workplace or are they going to uh, more of these uh, parks, residential, uh, or they are going to recreation uh, places. So uh, this is the, the mobility trend that I capture from uh, apple.com and also google.com. And uh, they, they would tell us some uh, information about what is uh, happening out there and uh, most likely uh, which area will be benefiting uh, from this recovery. Okay, so um, then I will talk about the market outlook and also this um, Malaysia strategy, uh, which sector that we have to take note of and uh, sectors and stock picks as well. So I think um, today's market has been, uh, yesterday's market has been quite um, uh, significant uh, to us because uh, yesterday's uh, sell down uh, which is uh, quite severely uh, oversold. And today you can see a broad-based recovery. Uh, so what does that mean? And how, how technical analysis can actually assist uh, us from this point onwards? So later on, I'll show you one chart and also another um, uh, heat map of uh, FBM KLCI to tell you that in, in March itself, it is a very deadly month. Or I would say that uh, most of the times, out of uh, 20 years itself, the average return for March is uh, negative. And after that, you can actually expect and anticipate the April to be a recovery. And then moving into uh, May itself, then people will say that sell in May and go away and things like that. So uh, March is normally uh, the sell down phase after the February reporting season month. And then April will be a recovery or rebounding uh, month. And then uh, going into May, then people will start to panic again. So. Uh, that is just uh, a cycle about the stock market. Okay, so looking at the COVID-19 uh, you know, status, uh, we can see that uh, it is... So it is uh, on the way up and it pulled back and then uh, on the way up again. And uh, right now, I think uh, it is around 129 million. Uh, this is data as of uh, 27 of March. But if you look into today's data, it is still uh, climbing in terms of daily confirmed cases. So I, I would say that some of the uh, places are also into a lockdown mode, but uh, I wouldn't be too worried on that because uh, at this point of time, what we can think of uh, in, in Malaysia is that at least uh, it is contained below 1,005 uh, cases uh, right now daily on a daily, daily basis. And uh, it has been uh, on a recovering path. And uh, since, uh, you know, uh, yesterday or a few days back, um, the government has opened up the, uh, you know, people can actually start to go back to office and things like that. So uh, full force of uh, full workforce, are, you know, going, going back to work and um, the economy has been uh, started, start, uh, started back uh, since, uh, our, uh, I think, in February or even in January uh, this year. So 
that is a good sign and uh, we, we can expect more of this domestic consumption and also do, uh, domestic activities to contribute towards uh, all this um, all this recovery play in, in the stock market moving forward. So that is where we are going to uh, put our uh, you know, stock picks into the, the right sector instead of you know, going to uh, gloves or even other, other sectors. I think right now uh, people are just looking to uh, more of recovery play and uh, despite the uh, you know uh, higher and higher of this uh, daily confirmed cases we are not too worried because um, uh, we are uh, likely to have more and more people into the uh, vaccine being uh, vaccinated so if you take make the thing of this uh, uh, daily cases is just 126 million versus uh, the administered um, COVID-19 vaccine, which is 500 million and above. So, which means that more of the people are being vaccinated and we can actually anticipate a better recovery uh, from this point. So, if you have uh, gone through this, uh, this you, you have, if you have sailed through this uh, one year itself, uh, this time, I, I, I don't think uh, the daily confirmed cases, uh, rising daily confirmed cases will actually dampen the stock market uh, anymore, but people will be looking the narrative right now would be looking for recovery play in the stock market. Okay, um, Malaysia has a uh, few vaccine programs, uh, so we have uh, around 35.2 uh, million uh, people being covered uh, based on the procurement uh, done by our government uh, from Pfizer, BioNTech, uh, Sinovac, AstraZeneca, CanSino, uh, CanSino Bio, and Sputnik V. So it can covers around uh, 108% of the population. So uh, this will bring uh, some, if, if there is a smooth uh, vaccination uh, rollout plan, uh, then it should benefit um, the whole um, of Malaysia. And if this can, uh, uh, this, this can uh, be uh, smoothly rolled out within the next 18 months, uh, because Kyrie and also uh, the uh, uh, PM has mentioned that uh, we need around 18 months, uh, to uh, vaccinate uh, vaccine uh, administered uh, into our population around uh, 18 months. So I think that is very important. And uh, But uh, uh, our PM also give us another clue uh, to, um, to being uh, a little bit cautious. Uh, why do I want to say uh, th in this manner? Because um, he mentioned, uh, Tan Sri Yassin has mentioned that uh, during this period, if uh, we have hit around 50% of population being uh, vaccinated, uh, what he will do is he might be calling an election. So uh, people might be afraid of that and uh, people might turn cautious again, you know, once uh, the vaccine program has hit around uh, around 16 million uh, population by then. So uh, I think that will need some time. Right now we are, you know, hitting just one uh, near to uh, 700, 800 million, uh, sorry, 0.7 um, around 700 uh, to 800,000 of people being vaccinated. So uh, right now, I think it's still not so soon yet. And uh, right now, our state of emergency is also until August. So basically, we have a timeline to say that um, throughout this period until August, we are still quite safe. And, uh, and that, is, uh, that is our opportunity right now. Uh, if the election risk is coming back, and that could... Uh, you know, see some sell down phase in the stock market. So we have to time uh, ourselves properly uh, throughout this period of uh, April until June, until August. Okay, so what, what do I see in the uh, mobility trends is that this is during uh, the 20, uh, 2020, March, April uh, period. That uh, point of time is uh, the WHO calling um, the COVID-19 as a pandemic. And you can see that People has not been able to travel. People has been not uh, going out or driving and things like that. So lockdown phase has been seen uh, during that point of time. So right now in the US, it has gone into uh, you know uh, full swing uh, because this is uh, some sort of a normal position uh, compared to uh, January or February last year. So in that sense, in that sense, uh, people are really going out. People are really taking. Uh, you know, walking out and driving to places and uh, that shows some recovery uh, state in, in the US, okay? But in UK itself, it's just barely uh, back to the baseline and it is not back towards the normal period uh, in uh, January or February. Uh, Singapore itself, you can see that it's recovering uh, quite well and um, people have started to use more 
of the public transport, which means that people are traveling around compared to March and also April last year. And Malaysia itself, you can see that uh, it is generally uh, going up, but uh, we have hit some uh, hiccups because of CMCO and also last, last year itself, there is also a CMCO or, uh, in various places. So uh, right now we have just started to recover. So uh, as long as we are on the recovery path, I'm not too worried about uh, uh, the, the resumption of business activities and therefore uh, we are uh, likely to uh, benefit out of this recovery position. Okay, so I also take into account uh, other uh, information that I can get on the mobility trends. Just now that uh, data is based on uh, apple.com and uh, this one is based on google.com. Okay, so uh, what uh, this arrow shows here is that compared to two weeks ago, uh, what has changed and what has not uh, uh, has changed up or down or flat. Uh, so let's, let's look into the flattish part first. Um, over the past two weeks, uh, we can see that there is not much changes in, in terms of uh, the uh, places where people hang out. Uh, it is uh, residential. Again, uh, you can see that it's plus 11%. So it didn't really move much from this, this range. Uh, but what you can see is that uh, people have started to go out to parks. People have started to go out to supermarket and pharmacy. People have started to go out to uh, retail recreation. So since last year, uh, since last year, okay? So we can uh, see that uh, that uh, it has been on the recovery path, okay? So that is what we can uh, look out uh, in, in terms of uh, all this data. And then in terms of public transport, although we are still negative 41%, uh, sorry, negative 44%, uh, but uh, this shows that it has some uh, good recovery movement uh, since, since last year, okay? So um, basically what I want to paint the picture right now is that uh, we are on a recovery path. Uh, and uh, despite all these COVID-19 cases has been continuously uh, above the 1,000, 1,500 range, it is still uh, manageable. And uh, KKM is still continuing their efforts on the vaccination uh, program. And therefore, uh, we, with that, uh, we are likely to see some good uh, potential, uh, you know, uh, trading uh, movements in the market. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the GDP impact uh, from COVID-19. I think last year itself, uh, everyone has suffered uh, quite a fair bit, uh, unless you're talking about China because they contain well in terms of um, the uh, COVID-19. Uh, at that point of time, they still, uh, in 2020, year 2020, they still are able to make 2.3% year-on-year growth uh, in terms of their GDP numbers. Uh, but the rest of the world, I think um, it is uh, down. So the world GDP has down 3.5%, uh, Singapore, Malaysia has down 54 and 5.6% respectively. So what is the um, idea that we are looking, uh, what are the numbers that we are looking right now in 2021? Uh, definitely we are looking into a potential recovery year. So if there is a recovery, where is the, you know, where is the, where, where are the people who will spend money on and where are the parts that we can trade? Uh, and also invest in. So this is a uh, very important numbers uh, because everyone is looking at a recovery year, but what are the counters that we can expect to make money from that is more important, right? So uh, Malaysia is likely to uh, grow maybe towards 5.5%. This is based on consensus numbers um, and 5.0 uh, uh, in year 2022. So uh, to, to have this, uh, to, to gain this 5.5% uh, of um, uh, GDP growth, I think uh, a lot of efforts has been done by uh, uh, the PN government. Uh, currently, uh, they have more than uh, 320 billion of uh, stimulus packages has been, you know, uh, dishing out uh, continuously until recently the Permacasa uh, stimulus package of around 20 B. And uh, that is also helping, that is at least, uh, you know, cushioning, cushioning the downside risk of the economic activities. Um, uh, in, in our uh, in our uh, local front. And therefore, I, I think uh, that is very helpful at least to cushion the downside risk. Uh, but also you can say that it is because of low base, we are enjoying the 5.5% uh, this year uh, of the growth this year. So, uh, but certainly we are definitely looking into a grow, growing year. And uh, I think uh, the best uh, I think the best way to understand the uh, where 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 should we put our money in, 
is uh, look, look out for trends that is emerging and also look out for if, if under COVID-19, uh, under COVID-19 year, uh, which are the ones that are still able to make profits? Those are the companies having good qualities and you know that they are quite recession proof and therefore uh, you should be looking at those companies again in 2020, but not forgetting the domestic uh, recovery, uh, such as such as construction, properties, uh, building materials, and also gaming and, uh, you know, all these gaming and aviation uh, industries. Um, but later on, I'll share with you what are the um, sort of keywords or the hints that we should be taking from the media in order for us to, you know, bank on uh, certain, uh, certain counters or certain sectors uh, moving forward. Okay, so far so good. Any questions, if you want to pose any questions, let me know and I'll tr just try to check uh, whether is there any questions that uh, people are asking uh, on and off here and there. Okay, so moving forward uh, uh, to next slide, uh, we have this market review uh, to understand where is the, uh, where is the uh, uh, FBM KLCI standing right now. So uh, basically uh, FBM KLCI is the, uh, the lowest part here, you can see that uh, it is still growing from last year, but it is still not, not being the leaders. Uh, you can see that the uh, Shanghai Composite Index uh, has, and also the Dow Jones has been you know, going up higher and higher, and also the purple color is the SDI. So just that our KLCI is being um, you know, uh, sort of uh, distorted here, decoupled from the rest of the regions. Uh, why is that so? I think uh, personally, I, I, I've, I felt that because of the glove counters are in, uh, in a heavy weights in one of the heavy weights that has been uh, coming into uh, play during uh, last year itself. And this year, due to the sell down phase of uh, these three uh, major uh, glove heavyweights in, in FBM KLCI, and therefore they are not really uh, you know, performing as well as the rest of the region. Okay. Uh, other than that, you can see uh, into um, Busa Exchange. Um, basically, uh, Busa Exchange has been, uh, the performance has been uh, uh, quite stellar for, for selected you know, sectors such as, such as um, the uh, healthcare and also technology during uh, COVID-19 year, uh, which is year 2020. But uh, this year itself, you can see that um, the healthcare sector has been coming off, okay? Coming off uh, due to the sell down phase in the glove counters. Uh, and you can see that the technology sectors are still performing very well, holding quite steadily uh, compared to last year. So um, if you, if you uh, understand this particular chart, it means that uh, you are able to capture some of the counters uh, that I'm going to propose to you uh, to you know, make some good uh, investment accumulation. Uh, basically, I would I would go for those uh, technology stocks because they are still wanted in uh, in in uh, in various parts of the funds. Okay, so funds will certainly look out for technology because they are continuously uh, making good improvements, R and D, and things like that. So that's why uh, people will still continue uh, to look out uh, for technology counters. Uh, I think uh, healthcare will continue to decline. Uh, for, for a bit and consolidate um, until uh, perhaps uh, another few more uh, another few more weeks. Um, other than that, uh, like I said earlier on, uh, you should look out for counters uh, within uh, the sectors such as uh, technology because last year itself they make a very stellar result, and uh, moving forward they might be continuing uh, that 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 growing trend and not forgetting the recovery play. So what, are the, what sort of recovery play are we looking at right now? Is certainly the uh, consumer, construction, telco, and media, because they are part of the laggards, okay? Part of the laggards. So if we are looking into a broad-based recovery for Malaysia and uh, the leaders, we, have, we really need to add some alpha in it. So we need alpha, so we need technology counters. But some of the uh, key laggards will be very interesting to play on. Like properties recently has been, you know, going up higher and higher in, in terms of the property index, in terms of construction sector as well. So those are the company, those are the sectors that has been bashed down quite severely uh, in, in few uh, last last few years or last year itself. So what are the catalysts out there for 
consumer definitely is because of revenge spending. I want to mention this revenge spending because uh, a lot of people out there has been uh, has been not able to share uh, spend their money during uh, year 2020 and most of the time they only can you know uh, make some online shopping and things like that they can't travel so they have a lot of money that you know being saved up so people right now can go out they want to you know uh, buy something so that is why revenge spending is very very crucial in year 2021 and why construction and also properties okay so think about this if you are already having a lockdown mode during year 2020 you would definitely want something to pamper yourself because during COVID-19 year, you can't really spend your money much out there, you know, go, going uh, to travel or things like that. So you will have some extra cash to also say that, you know, um, since that I can't go out much in the future or within the next one to two years period, might as well I pamper myself by buying good stuff for myself and also perhaps buying one unit for myself and, you know, having some privacy and things like that. So right now, uh, people might be going to that direction and that would justify people to buy into property units. Although, Bank Nagara to say that, you know, the supply for uh, property units are still, are still very, uh, a lot of supply out there, a lot of property units haven't been uh, selling well, but I can see that there are some parts of the uh, region that are selling well in terms of the property units. So I guess property and construction tied together. And when construction is booming and uh, properties are booming uh, again, then people will link back to building materials as well. So these are some of the three sectors that you can actually look out for uh, as a chain of reaction. Uh, when properties are in demand, people will, you know, contractors, uh, contractors or builders will build for them. And when um, builders are building for them, what do they need? They need building materials. So these are the, the ideas, the thoughts, the thought process that I always uh, think about and I try to pinpoint to counters which has a good fundamental and good technical perspective. Then I will try to, um, you know, trade on those counters or um, benefit out of those counters. So, um, yeah, so other than that, uh, I, I saw some questions talking about uh, how about transportation counter like TN Logistics. So, Counters wise, I will talk about later. I, I think I, I would just take uh, the sector as a whole first. Uh, transportation and logistics, I think last year uh, has benefited a lot. And until recently, there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, this kind of courier delivery services counters has been mushrooming out uh, from uh, everywhere. They are having all these, um, you know, delivery, last bound delivery services. And they, they pitch, you know, sometimes the, these, these investors pitch, uh, I mean, these, these companies pitch to investors to say that when you open one shop lot, the uh, break even is within one to six months. So is that, that is the pace because of there is this um, huge demand in terms of uh, online shopping and things like that, or, or you're delivering parcel uh, from end to end, from your side to another, uh, another side without, you know, meeting each other, but you want to, um, you want to try, uh, you want to send document towards the, the other parties. So these are some of the places that has a lot of gap. So that is why p uh, these companies has been pitching investment uh, investment uh, investors to say that you know put your money into this uh, last mile delivery and then uh, you can actually make money out, out of it or within the next one to six months. So that is um, the 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 sector itself. Uh, as a whole, I think last mile delivery has uh, a lot of gaps to be. Uh, to be fulfilled. Uh, and uh, the, the other part of things uh, that I can think of in transportation and logistics is the vaccine distribution part. Mm. So uh, just now, uh, I think uh, uh, Tasco, Tasco, uh, uh, Tasco Holdings perhaps has been, uh, you know, notifying that it, they are having some MOUs and uh, that is for uh, perhaps the vaccine distribution uh, purposes. Okay, so I, I guess uh, there are two parts here uh, in transportation and logistics. One is uh, for the vaccine distribution and one is for um, the last mile delivery. So last mile delivery, I think uh, you will know that, you know, polls, uh, everyone, everyone would be having this uh, last mile delivery, like uh, even TN Logis also have, have, have that last mile delivery as well. Okay, so um, I shall not uh, talk too much on that. Um, Let's focus on the slides, then uh, we'll talk about it, the topics later on. Uh, so retailers participation still in the net flow, net inflow position. I think um, uh, since last year, uh, I think 
uh, during this lockdown, a lot of people has uh, extra cash. They also put their money into a uh, stock market. They have benefited out of it. Some might have uh, gone into uh, good counters or you know, some might, might go, uh, went into some speculative counters. But all in all, I would say that this retailer's participation is a decent one. It's a decent, why do I say so? It's because we need more of a check and balance uh, in, the, in, the, in the stock market. That, that is why um, if we have only institutional and we have only foreigners and very lacking, uh, lack, lacking on the uh, retailer's participation, then uh, that wouldn't be a vi very vibrant uh, trading activities. So for now, I think uh, the inflows of uh, retail uh, retailers are uh, quite impressive. They are, you know, net retailers uh, in uh, on uh, 26th of March, it is uh, uh, near to 5 billion. Uh, net foreign outflow is uh, 2.4 billion for now. Okay, so uh, just to give you an, an idea that um, the the KLCI or the, the, the stock market has been quite supportive uh, by the retailers itself. Okay, so retailers participation has been going up, to, you know, since 2019. Uh, the average participation rate uh, was around just 24.9%. Uh, uh, 2020 itself, it went up to 358 And right now in 2021, as of March uh, 26, um, it is at 39.3%. So it means that, you know, there are a lot of retailers in the market. And that is a good sign that uh, people are trading. As long as people are still trading, people are still putting their money into the stock market. I think uh, it is worthwhile, you know, to uh, to to trade the stock market as, as of this juncture. So uh, talking about uh, the market outlook and market valuations, uh, because we understand that since last year, uh, everyone has slashed down their you know uh, earnings uh, due to COVID nineteen environment, and right now market has been trading higher. And even higher than 10 years PE, and uh, the, the uh, range of trading is around 34.2 times uh, of PE versus 10 years average of PE of 19 times. Uh, so this is uh, telling you that uh, there is a narrative to say that um, the stock market is on a very overstretched position, but you also can say that they are anticipating a recovery and therefore, uh, they are trading at a fair PE right now. I mean, it depends on how you justify uh, this uh, this range of uh, thirty four point two times PE. Okay, but as long as um, based, I mean, based on my technical uh, knowledge itself, as long as the trend is still up, I think uh, there is not much of worry right now, uh, because once uh, people sell down, uh, definitely that there, there be some signals that we have to take note, and we have to uh, we have to you know, go according to the market itself because market is always right. So at this point of time, they are saying that, yeah, it is trading at 34.2 times PE, but so what? So what, right? Um, so people might, be, the market might be looking into uh, the future, a one-year period, and mm -hmm. hopefully that the growth of the EPS will grow back, you know, to normalize the PE moving forward. Okay. So in terms of SPX, it's also the same thing, 32.4 times versus 10 year average of around 19 times. Uh, KLCI is a bit uh, downer. Uh, they have, you know, went up to around 20, 23, 24, but right now it's back towards uh, coming back, you know, uh, at least it is below the blue line. The blue line is, uh, I think, two standard deviation above uh, the mean of 17.7 uh, .7 times. So uh, right now it is, back into, uh, at least it's not so um, expo uh, expensive uh, in, in terms of valuations. And uh, I, I would suggest, I, I would think that it is because that the KLCI has a lot of uh, glove counters that has been bringing KLCI down. And uh, so that's why uh, right now it's trading at just 20.9 20, 20 times. So it's, if you're comparing to the world, then Malaysia is not too expensive. But again, there is also another question mark of uh, the um, uh, what do you call that? The uh, country which people might, you know, take uh, the recent political developments as a caution note. Uh, I wouldn't, I, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, this is very fearful, but, um, you know, foreigners are, you know, always going out from uh, Malaysia uh, because of uh, the political risks. Okay. So that is one part that we have to, uh, we have to say, uh, we have to mm, uh, give the, the, the right view about the stock market, why we are trading at 20, 20 times, but not 30 times PE and things like that. So that also makes some, um, makes some impact towards our uh, KLCI PE. 
Okay, so this part here is my expertise of uh, the uh, on the technical analysis, and I would suggest that uh, yesterday's uh, sell down is very severe, but today also accompanied by a rebound. And what is the anticipation of uh, right now until April or at least another two uh, two weeks from now? Uh, it is like likely uh, to uh, for, uh, from this perspective, I think uh, it is likely to um, stay afloat above at least the 1528 to 1557 for the near term. And hopefully that is a good recovery play from to, uh, tomorrow onwards. And today has started to rebound. And from tomorrow onwards, I hope that we can sustain above this level. And uh, our next target that uh, in the short to mid term, I would see it around 1646 towards the 1695 level. Okay, I want to bring you back to 2018 as well to understand why uh, I, I am uh, quite slightly optimistic on uh, this part here is that if you take note on uh, 2018 uh, during March as well, March, April, there is a huge sell down and this is quite similar. You can see that sideways range, then sell down, it hit near towards the support range. Okay, that year itself is also a general election year. Okay, bear in mind, general election year. And uh, this year, you know, we have until August, uh, we, are, we are not too sure when, you know, the P, uh, PM will announce the election. But to give you an understanding that the similarities of this year and 2018 is quite the same. It's quite the same. Uh, generally, we have a very strong rally. February, uh, stabilize. March, sell down. April, re uh, recover. So back to just now that uh, particular chart. So, so we have uh, KLCI right now uh, in, in this year, early this year. We can, uh, we, we can see that the rally has started since November, December. January still have uh, the technology run. Uh, technology stocks are still running in January. Okay, this is sideways, right? Sideways and then March sell down. Similar, similar to 2018. So rally, sideways, sell down and recover. Okay, recover. So right now it is having the same kind of formation. In, uh, in, in the KLCI versus 2018. And the narrative right now is also quite the same. 2018 has election, okay? 2021 might have, I mean, we don't know, but people are already talking about that. And uh, if that is true enough, we should be following 2018 chart. And 2018 chart tells us that there is still uh, some sort of rally into April. And what we are uh, having some similarity here is also the same kind of uh, information that uh, putting together, if you know um, this portion is being sold down, down the road, we are not too sure what happened. If there is an election being called, then maybe people will start to be afraid and people will start to sell down the shares uh, from that point onwards. Okay, so uh, right now I'm not, I'm not you know, um, putting fear into your emotions right now. Uh, just to give you an idea that don't be too pessimistic about yesterday's sell down. Uh, that could be a recovery coming back uh, towards the 1646. And then uh, perhaps uh, people will call again the sell in May and go away kind of uh, narrative from that point of view. So, okay. So, uh, just to also back up my point on, uh, on this uh, FBM KLCI is that you can see over the past 20 years, over the past 20 years, uh, that the, the average of uh, March return is negative 0.22 percent. Uh, so uh, it suggests us that uh, March is not a very decent month. And uh, this uh, this recent uh, March, we have seen uh, negative 0.27 sell down. So, okay, so into April, um, generally speaking, uh, it is normally a, a decent quarter, at least 1%. Then May, you can see sell down again. Then until uh, August and September also sell down. So these are some of the uh, some of the things that you can actually use uh, to back up your information and uh, try to avoid when you have to avoid, try to uh, uh, go full force or full swing when you need to. So for instance, in April, I think uh, that it, it should be a, a decent month and also decent quarter to look out for uh, from this point, okay? So small cap actually yesterday didn't uh, didn't see some heavy sell down. Uh, so it is still within the 
trend in tech position within the channel and being supported around the 16,000 towards the 18,000 level, I think that two range would be the, the place that you want to look out for trading opportunities. And especially small cap right now is certainly very uh, attractive in terms of all these counters are uh, tied towards recovery play and uh, property, construction, building materials. Those are the companies that you have to take note of. Um, but something to ponder here is uh, whether you should be going more in terms of East market or going in terms of uh, more in terms of uh, the main market. I, I guess um, you have to select a good sector, first of all, and uh, select the uh, good market, uh, East market or small cap or main board uh, to, to take, uh, take your position into. So if you're trading on uh, East market, it's very tough. I would say that uh, only uh, selective counters such as, you know, those counters are under uh, technology counters under the ACE market will likely to perform, then uh, uh, most of the ACE market counters may uh, continue to turn lower uh, from this point because the uh, chart is not that decent anymore. Okay, not that decent anymore. So just try to avoid uh, perhaps on, on those uh, ACE market counters. And I think uh, we also need to understand the US dollar MYL trend uh, just in case this will continue to weaken further or strengthen further, you know where you should put your money into. So um, normally when, uh, when, when it is on a strengthening path, then you have to look out for banks, you have to look out for, uh, for those domestic counters to, uh, to look out to, to invest. Uh, but if you are looking into a uh, weakening bias tone, then you should be looking to export counters such as glove, furniture, technology, and things like that. So at, at this point of time, I think uh, as long as we are still above the 4.1 4 level, then, uh, then it is uh, very likely to, uh, you, you can see some good opportunities in the tech counters. So I think uh, for the ringgit trend uh, is certainly decent. Uh, and uh, if we are ba basing on this, the, in, in terms of uh, this, uh, Ringgit trend. If it is continue to on the weakening path, then uh, we are looking into the tech counters to benefit out of it. So, uh, try to monitor on this. If it is on a weakening bus, you know what to do. If it is on a strengthening path, you also know what to do. Uh, from this point, okay. So uh, I just give you an idea right now. The ringgit trend is on the weakening path, but just in case it turns around, then you have to know where you should put money into. Okay. Go. Continues to be in the correction phase. Uh, I think uh, during last year, uh, COVID nineteen year, there are a lot of uh, trading opportunities uh, on the glove count uh, on the gold counters, uh, like uh, Pokong, Tomei, and things like that. But right now, I think the um, the interest has actually waned off, and therefore we shouldn't be putting our money into uh, the gold uh, related counters. So red oil is always uh, wanted by. Uh, by investors. I think this year itself, it, is, it could be a black horse uh, in, in uh, Busa, Malaysia, uh, because um, it has been rising since uh, 30 or 20 over US dollar mark, uh, you know, towards 60 over uh, 60, 61 uh, towards 671 level. And uh, this will perhaps give us an idea that um, contracts might be coming back and uh, and that would actually give some good impact, good positive impact towards the uh, energy counters, such as, uh, you know, all these high discus, uh, Dayang, Charmin, energy. So uh, I'm going to continue to focus uh, very uh, much on, on this moving forward. Uh, just that one thing that I have, have to take note is that the trend or the, 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 um, the uh, share price of the current oil and gas counters are not that decent yet. So I, I would just wait until it has turned into a, a full swing potential. Then we will start to recommend again and again uh, from the point where. So for now, I think we are, we are we know that Brent Oil is on a positive intact trend, and uh, and therefore we shall monitor on those oil and gas counters uh, from this point onwards. Okay, CPO is also another very uh, uh, I would say unique uh, sector that you know since. Uh, since last year itself, uh, it has been continuing rising since the trend, uh, you know, uh, 2286 level 
lowest near, near towards the lowest uh, point in, in year 2020 right now is near towards multi-year multi-year high uh, around 4,000 3,005 towards 4,000 range so uh, I'm not too sure why funds are not really coming in maybe it could be the ESG portion that you know uh, they are not fulfilling much uh, but I, I think uh, this is uh, something very very interesting uh, for us to uh, for us to take note that one day if uh, people starts to you know uh, look out for ESG and some counters manage to uh, manage to deal with all these ESG and they will make a lot of earnings and uh, the cash may come out as a strong dividend. So I I I can see that uh, this year itself uh, definitely. Uh, the earnings for plantation counters is solid. Okay, it's solid. So what they can do to reward shareholders is by giving out dividends. So that is one point uh, that uh, that is good about plantation counters. Uh, so far, earnings is solid. Um, potential wise uh, to to dish out uh, the dividends. That's uh, that's for sure. Okay. So just to give you an idea of uh, since uh, you know twenty seventeen, I've uh, make an average price because this average price will turn into um, the earnings for uh, most of the uh, planters, okay, planters, uh, CPO planters. Um, therefore, uh, since 2017, it has been uh, very uh, downish, uh, but uh, since the third quarter 19, it has started to move up, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2020 has started to move up even stronger, and therefore the Q on Q perspective, okay, for first quarter itself until 30th of March, is 3647 versus Q on Q is 14% higher, is uh, versus year on year is 39% higher. So this will roughly translate into earnings uh, for the plantation counters. So if you ask me whether you know 39% year on year is good enough, Q on Q 14% is good enough, I would say that it is fabulous. Okay, it's fabulous because we have we have sort of uh, a certain information to say that. Um, planters should be able to make at least 14% quarter on quarter, uh, year on year wise 39%. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the stats, the figure that we can uh, show you. Okay, so earnings wise, I, I wouldn't be uh, too afraid, I, I wouldn't be too worried on, on uh, plantation orders, but the share price, can, can we reflect into share price? That is a question mark. So right now, if you are dealing with plantation counters, um, definitely the earnings is there. So whether they have uh, give they, they are able to give out high dividends, then that would provide you some catalyst or impetus to um, you know buy into. Uh, so that is uh, the idea behind the plantation counters. So daily trading value on Busa Exchange uh, from 2019, 2020, and 2021. Uh, so this is also another uh, stats that I can provide to you, and I think uh, that should also uh, bring you some uh, good investment case study. So if Bursa Exchange is uh, on the way up in terms of daily trading value, although, you know, these two weeks itself, it has been uh, just around three to four billion uh, mark. So it is not as exciting um, as compared to 5.15 uh, billion. If you take note on uh, this, this figure here, 2021, but until right now, it is near towards 5 billion. But every day right now is trading at three to four billion only. So it is 25% lower. So given that number, given that number, if they continue to persist another quarter or two quarters or so, then uh, yes, it is not looking that great. But one day, if it is continuously trading at five billion and above, then we should take note of um, this, this, uh, this segment called the uh, financial stockbroking or exchange counters okay so this uh uh the places uh, these are some of the stats that i can bring forward to you just uh to tell you that yes uh, there is some trading opportunities within uh busa exchange or busa malaysia itself or even the stock brokers such as um, you know kananga uh, such as uh, apex and things like that okay so um, those are the market outlook and market review. Uh, let's come to the strategy part. Okay, so I saw some questions uh, asking about also the technology counters, uh, which counter has prospects. Uh, I would say that um, those EMS players that has not been, you know, bashed down uh, during this recent month, uh, the March, in March, uh, still has a lot of potential. And uh, some counters that are still hovering above the 
simple moving average 50 is still uh, very interesting as well. So I, I, I will name some names later on, but uh, right now we'll go through the strategy first and see what can uh, we anticipate, uh, what are the things that we should be looking for uh, this year. Okay, uh, so strategy part, definitely we are going to look out for the aviation and gaming on the recovery team. And the only thing that we are waiting for is really the travel borders, international travel borders to be updated. So if the media or the, you know, uh, in terms of the Minister of, Ministry of Defense to, uh, will conclude that the travel borders is being uplifted, Definitely the Asia, you know, all this uh, aviation industry will benefit again and they will start reacting to that particular news. So if you know that travel borders will be uplifted in the future or travel bubbles will be initiated in the future, then why not you, you know, participate before the news come out? Because right now vaccine is going out, uh, rolling out quite smoothly uh, in, in various countries. They are already having a lot of vaccination program. And so, um, it is a matter of time that uh, travel borders will be uplifted and travel bubbles will be initiated so in, in moving forward. So uh, if these two keywords will come up in the media, in the social media or in, in terms of the news media, pick it up and I think uh, aviation and gaming will be the beneficiary out of these uh, two particular word keywords uh, moving forward. So wine gaming uh, or you can say tourism uh, related counters such as Gunting and Gunting Malaysia will benefit because uh, not during normal times a lot of tourists comes into Malaysia and they will go up to Gunting. So I think uh, that part of uh, the, the place is uh, very important. Uh, I mean in, in terms of tourism that is the um, that is the icon. Uh, for Malaysia. So I think if you are talking about the recovery team and these two keywords come out, I think uh, Air Asia and also Gunting Malaysia, you know, can't uh, go wrong. Okay. Um, next one will be construction recovery inside, uh, spill over to building materials. I think most of the, uh, most of the uh, stimulus packages, uh, you know, being, being dished out by the government since uh, last, last year. Uh, due to this COVID pandemic, uh, they have been uh, putting a lot of emphasis and emphasizing the uh, importance of construction sector and the ongoing and new projects that has uh, been, you know, in the media out there is also part and parcel of the construction team. So recently, Gamuda and also uh, this P, uh, PTMP uh, has started uh, to surface in the media. And so that could, you know, spill over towards other construction counters and uh, also spill over to the building materials. I One of one counter that I really like in terms of building material later on, I'll share with you, is the precast concrete related counters, okay? If you know what is the counter, please uh, put into the comments, type in uh, that particular counter and uh, see whether you have hit it, okay? Um, revenge spending, just now I mentioned, revenge spending to leave the consumer sector is really, uh, an important part of uh, consumer sector uh, in this year itself. Uh, I think uh, the e-commerce online uh, shopping spree will continue. You know, every month I've been, you know, uh, bombarded by Lazada and Shop Shopee to say that, you know, uh, every month, one uh, January 1st, February 2nd, March 3rd, you know, April 4th, all these days are again and again a uh, shopping spree for uh, consumers. So I think uh, people would, you know, try to say that, yeah, last year I didn't use a lot of money. This year, might as well use some money and buy uh, some things online. I personally have shopped a lot uh, in, in terms of uh, this, uh, during this uh, COVID, uh, COVID year, because we can't go out and we have to buy things uh, from, you know, uh, the groceries and things like that. So uh, through this shopping spree or through this um, uh, unavoidable times, you know, you only can shop the, uh, using this kind of method and you are likely and bind, bound to use a lot of plastics and paper packaging. Do you agree? Yeah, because uh, you can't really go out, you have to take away food. So you have a lot of bento sets or whatever to take away. And that is where a lot of plastic and paper packaging has been utilized and the demand has been rising uh, tremendously throughout that year. And I would say that this uh, you know, plastic and paper packaging will still continue 
until maybe this year end. And uh, hopefully that uh, people will start to get back to normal situation and, you know, can shop uh, in, in places, uh, uh, in, in the malls, then only people will start reducing the plastic and paper packaging. But for now, I think it is still on the high side in terms of the use, usage of papers and plastics. So next catalyst or team that I would uh, uh, take note of would be the significant increase in trading activity. So this will contribute to higher daily trading value and that would benefit full side exchange or uh, so, you know all the stock brokers uh, in town. And uh, so that if you notice some of the counters have been trading higher, you just take note of that. Then I think uh, those, those are the counters that you have to uh, participate in. And the plantation sector is uh, definitely one of the important part, just that uh, people might be uh, going off, going away from this sector, perhaps due to the ESG and uh, not a lot of uh, funds are uh, able to, to, to trade or to invest in plantation sectors. So that is why um, for retailers, what you can do is participate in those uh, very decent counters such as Kim Long. Uh, we, do we do some coverage. Uh, our target is around 140 to 150. And uh, they are, are having some good, uh, decent dividend yields uh, around four to five percent. Uh, based on, I mean, based on the current structure in the market, maybe you say that yeah, you can earn more than uh, four to five percent uh, by trading the stock market. Yes, I understand that. But if for uh, investors that want to have a solid uh, dividend yield four to five percent, uh, which is better than fixed deposit, I think plantation sector uh, deserve one spot in in terms of your portfolio. Okay, positive trending in crude oil prices. I will take note of this um, commodity and uh, try to monitor whether there is any opportunity for me to take part uh, in, in terms of the energy stocks, oil and gas counters. So, so for instance, if oil and gas stocks are uh, looking into a positive trend moving forward, then I uh, I think uh, you, you can actually participate in that. But for the time being, it is still quite sideways, ranging mode. Uh, so, I will wait for the breakout happens, then only we, we decide to accumulate more or even we, uh, you know, uh, try to issue some of the uh, technical ideas uh, from the point onwards. Okay, I saw some questions on um, renewable energy counters. Uh, what is your view? Because um, since we are also an uh, oil producing country, any government support to push this sector? I think a very important, a very good question uh, on this, uh, because I think renewable energy is part and parcel of our um, uh, power generation plan uh, into 2025. Uh, according to some data earlier on, uh, I think uh, the government wants to build the gen power generation mix uh, from the conventional part to more of the, uh, uh, the, the renewable energy part. So uh, I think uh, based on the latest stats or earlier stats that I, I have read is uh, they are only, um, sort of have having around 5% uh, power generation mix out of the 100%, they have 25% in renewable energy. They want to grow this part 5% into 20% uh, uh, or 25% by 2025. So that is why a lot of uh, this effort has been done. LSS 3, LSS 4 has been awarded recently. And I think uh, continuously every year, we should be having LSS uh, uh, projects uh, being dished out. Uh, until 2025 mm -hmm. in order for us to uh, in order for us to hit the power generation mix of 20% renewable energy versus 80% of conventional energy okay so that so that's that is my view on this I think government is very supportive in that manner uh, so if you think about solar energy you will also think about those three companies uh, but you also have to think about other sectors that might benefit out of this solar energy, uh, so solar power plant. Think about if you need the if you need the power plant uh, being uh, you know com commands, you need also the power grid and also power cables to generate this um, power into various uh, places, various regions. So if you are talking about solar energy itself, the proxy of this power plant is definitely the cables, power cables. So, uh, I mean, you can name yourself a few uh, companies that is related to cable. Um, I think that is decent enough for you to generate your investment ideas based on this. But the timing is very important. You know that you know, uh, this solar power plant is already 
going to uh, build in next maybe uh, you know uh, next one year or two years, and you know that this timeline is very crucial. So if LSS four is going to happen, it's definitely happening, and uh, those cables they, they should need cables as well, right? So those cable companies will benefit out of it as well. So in tandem with the power plant. I think the earnings from the cable industry will also grow as well. So I think uh, to your question, I think uh, there are two parts to it. Uh, one is the solar power plant uh, man uh, manufacture, uh, solar power plant uh, construction players. Uh, you, you, you know some of them. And the uh, cables companies that uh, could benefit out of this, uh, this power grid um, distribution phase as well. Okay, so just to briefly go through what is the uh, idea about the recovery team and all this uh, thematic uh, play uh, here before we go into the sectors. So um, right now I'm going through this uh, section and later on I will be sharing with, with you some of these topics. So if you are still with us, if you are still with us, please don't be shy and share this video or share this live webinar out because we are going to talk about the topics. And a lot of your friends would want to know about topics as well, right? So share this uh, video out to your friends and uh, make sure they are also benefiting from all this uh, information as well, okay? So uh, moving forward, uh, what are we talking about? This uh, recovery team will be this because of the smooth vaccination program rollout, uh, business activities can resume, uh, can have to restart and recovery play. Uh, SOP I know still persists, it's better to uh, persist because um, as, uh, as our health uh, DG mentioned, um, with or without vaccine, I think we, the SOP will still need to uh, uh, go on, okay? In order to break the chain, uh, SOP has to persist. So SOP will be there, but uh, it will only dampen the business activities by that fair bit until uh, a full recovery happen or uh, until the uh, break break uh, break the chain of uh, COVID nineteen, then uh, I think the business activities will be flourishing and uh, earnings will come in by then. So uh, these are some of the things that we uh, take note on uh, the recovery team and also very important is the uh, waiting for the travel borders to be uplifted. Uh, keyword in the media, travel bubbles to be initiated uh, in the media. If these few keywords are there. Um, definitely uh, all these companies will start to uh, rise even higher. I think uh, at this point of time, you are already able to travel in interstate if you have the vaccine um, certificate, okay? So uh, next will be construction activities uh, should recover in 2021. I think everyone would know about this. Higher development expenditure in uh, budget 2021 to uh, focus on ongoing and also uh, new projects and old, uh, as well as uh, you have to understand that Sarawak is also very important, Sarawak or East, Mala uh, East Malaysia as well. So those sections, you have some of the counters under this uh, particular segment that focuses on um, the, the Sarawak or even Sabah, uh, Sabah region. Those are the companies that you have to really take note of. And uh, ongoing uh, and new infrastructure to support the sector, I think everyone will know about this. Healthy multiplier effect for the economy. So once uh, we, we have this construction activities going on, then that would generate a lot of value towards the next value chain of the economy activities. So uh, that would bring up the GDP and the broad-based recovery would happen. So that is my view on the construction sector. And that uh, gives you, give us the next uh, sector to look out for, which is the building material part. Uh, this is definitely the proxy towards the construction sector. Um, tagging along with the construction recovery, we will expect the ASP for the building materials to gain momentum. So like in the recent months or recent quarters, you have been seeing uh, steel, uh, all these steel counters, uh, copper uh, related counters has been going up. Uh, they, are, they are looking into a recovery place. So that's why the commodities are recovering. So I personally like the uh, precast concrete segment. And uh, one of the counters that I like is OCA. Okay, so if you have hit the right answer, uh, congrats. Uh, I mean, there is no uh, price for you, but just that 
uh, this company is really, really decent. And it is definitely the leading indicator for the construction sector. So what do they do uh, later on, I'll tell you. Um, let's go on to next segment, uh, consumer segment, the essential segment, revenge spending uh, is to be expected after the lockdown, uh, pampering oneself to for be better quality items. Uh, that is always what we wanted. Online shopping sales or shopping spree uh, that also contributing to a higher usage of paper and plastic packaging. Uh, this is sort of a recession proof uh, sector because throughout MCO uh, itself, you can also notice that a lot of poultry counters survive through uh, this pandemic and even grow even better, such as CCK. I think CCK is one of the uh, best uh, poultry stock counter or aqua culture counter in, in, in Malaysia. So if you are taking note on, on counters under the consumer sector that is recession proof, that can also give you dividends, I think uh, CCK deserve uh, to be on your list. Okay, uh, plastic paper packaging on the rise. Um, I think need not to say much, takeaway food deliveries are on the rise. I think most of the time during last year to this year, you have generally spend more money on grab food or you know take away food and uh, that is where people really uh i mean those those are the places that you really need a lot of plastic and paper packaging uh in one bowl of soup you need at least three to four of the plastic uh, from the uh, bowl until the packaging and until the package out, outside okay so these are high uh, in terms of demand is rising from last time just one plastic bag right now you, have, you need three to four plastic bags in one takeaway delivery so uh, definitely uh, we are seeing this on the right so that's why uh, plastic and paper packaging certainly is uh, a must I think to put under your portfolio okay uh, financial strong free interests um, such as stock broking trading platforms uh, providers all these are proxy to the stock market so as long as there are still a lot of trading velocity in the market, I think uh, we can safely say that uh, these companies should benefit in terms of their earnings, uh, should be seeing some growth, and we'll, we'll expect some good quarterly report uh, in you know, May or even August. Okay, Plantation, uh, just now I've given you some stats on the CPO prices rising quite strongly. Uh, demand recovers after this COVID-19 uh, you know, pandemic. Uh, earnings will be favorable at least uh, for the next few quarters for some counters. Okay. So uh, my sector and stock picks uh, for rec recovery team will be Asia, Genting Malaysia Airport. Uh, uh, maybe it's, uh, Asia is uh, one of the stocks that we pick in first quarter. We also encourage you to hold on to it until the second quarter although recently share price has been tanking towards 95 cents level i think that would be some of the bottoms uh, if you take note of the recent product placement price is around 86.5 if the share price can come back towards 86.5 it is even better for you to pick up the shares okay if it's coming back to 86.5 it is even better because people are already uh you know put their money into you know the 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 product placement around 86.5. So if it is coming back to that level, you are getting almost the same price as the, you know, that, that person of uh, getting the product placement. So right now, the word of travel, bub uh, travel bubbles and travel uh, borders uplifted has not been in the media. So you are anticipating that to happen. If that will happen, um, certainly this share price will react positively. Okay, construction, we like uh, EconPal, AME, HSSEB, JAX, and PESTEC. Uh, the other sector to look at would be OKA, Anju, Hume Industry. OKA is the one that I mentioned here, uh, OKA. So uh, this is part of one, of one of the companies that are able to pay over the past 12 years in terms of dividends, around 3 to 4 cents dividend. So uh, if you ask me, they are certainly a very very encouraging company uh, and anything that is related to sewerage um, or drainage system you are looking for oka uh, th therefore um, if they are already making money they can make money meaning uh, the industry is already picking up because they are the first one to be paid because they are doing the drainage system anything that you are already seeing the whole building up 
uh, like MRT already up in terms of building, which means that their drainage already uh, being done. And which means that they have already taken their money in their pocket uh, from the, the, the project itself. So which means that if Oka is growing strongly in terms of their earnings, therefore uh, you should be looking at uh, the construction sector again. So uh, nine months uh, result has been quite promising around 10 or million. Last two years itself, they are all already hitting around 11 million in, in full year basis. So nine months already hitting 10. So I would assume that another uh, two to three million uh, can easily come through uh, within uh, the next quarter. Okay. So transportation logistics, uh, you can look out for post task for TN logistics. So these are some of the counters that uh, under uh, transportation that I look at. Uh, plantation, you can look at into Kim Long. Uh, dividend yield is around 45%. Um, they, they are very decent in terms of their uh, plantation, uh, uh, the CPO. Uh, the rate, uh, uh, the rate of, uh, the uh, it, compared to their peers are much better. Okay, so that is a very, uh, very decent company uh, for plantation. Uh, sector and stock picks uh, for consumer, we look into Leung Hub, Tio Seng, and Mr. DIY. I, I personally like uh, Mr. DIY because they um, they have been, okay, first of all, their earnings are uh, decent. They have been growing uh, throughout COVID-19 year. And uh, they are they, they listed around 10 billion. And right now it's, I think, uh, at the rate right now should be around 15 to 17, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of market cap. And what do I think about this is because um, in, in FBN KLCI, there are 25 counters. So right now, I think they are ranked around, they are ranked definitely above 25. Uh, so they are likely and very likely to go in in uh, May, June uh, review for FBM KLCI. So that is my justification risk. They are hitting all the right buttons, consumer spending. If you are a very, um, uh, if you think a lot about money, dollar and cents, you will definitely buy something that worth your money. So Mr. DIY uh, has this capability of serving both sides of the world, both sides of the things, uh, the, of the population. So if you are, not so uh, decent in terms of your financials, you go for value for money. So you can go to Mr. DIY and then get a cheapest thing and very value, uh, uh, very uh, cheap and good stuff. If you are also, uh, you know, uh, spending a lot on all this uh, DIY stuff, you also go there and spend something. So I, I would say that they are hitting um, a various range of markets of uh, people. People would go for, you know, value for money items uh, moving forward. Uh, under this, uh, you know, very uh, dire situation, you can say that a lot of people are in, into very uh, not so financially uh, uh, good during um, COVID-19 year. Uh, this year itself, maybe they are trying to uh, survive through. So they might also go to Mr. DIY and spend some money there to buy some uh, needs uh, item for their daily needs. Okay. So that is my whole idea here. Um, and remember, if they are going into KLCI, they would deserve uh, uh, spike in terms of their valuation. That is my view because uh, normally in in, uh, in KLCI, the valuation for consumer stocks are quite high in terms of like QL, in terms of uh, Nestle, they are you know, around 40, 50, 60 times P sometimes. So if Mr. DIY can go into you know the KLCI, certainly they might be hitting that uh, valuations. That is my guess uh, to it. So I, I, I'm still putting my... Uh, my uh, ideas uh, on uh, Mr. DIY for now, okay? Uh, plastic and paper packaging, you can look out for Tongguan, uh, Tiguan, uh, SCGM, Orna, Dinons, uh, PPHP. I, I personally like these two companies because they are dealing with uh, Tiguan. Uh, Tongguan is uh, uh, the, the rubbish bin, uh, the rubbish plastic uh, um, the, to, to, to Japan. So export to Japan. So uh, so those are the high quality, high grade uh, plastic uh, for rubbish bin uh, in, in Japan. So most of their exports, are, most of their uh, products are being exported. Uh, SCGM, uh, personally, I like because of um, they are serving uh, all those um, uh, takeaway stuff like bentos and things like that. Uh, so uh, SCGM will be benefiting out of uh, this, this con. Uh, this COVID-19 uh, environment because a lot of people would uh, take away stuff and things like that. So SCGM is the the, the uh, plastic uh, 
packages, uh, plastic manufacturers that provides this uh, product to all these uh, people out there. Okay. So technology-wise, front can uh, taking along with TS TSMC growth, uh, DNO, I think uh, it is the EV-related counter. Uh, they are also the LED-related because um, the components inside uh, a car will go exponentially higher in terms of LEDs from this point onwards. Conventional cars, normally you don't see LEDs. Right now, you can see more and more LEDs. So that is why uh, LEDs in inside the automotive industry is growing and that is where you can see some good uh, um, amount of uh, uh, growth in terms of uh, DNO uh, share, uh, in, in terms of their earnings as well. Uh, Willow, Unisam, uh, these are tagging. Uh, this is uh, one of the legged play. I would say that this relates to security system and uh, throughout this period of time, I think uh, we might need more and more of the security um, uh, uh, cybersecurity stuff. Uh, so they are actually part of uh, Singaporean, uh, some of Singaporean uh, authority uses their system. So they are that great, that level that uh, even Singapore, um, you know, recognize their uh, R&D efforts and their, their products. So I think Willow has a chance to um, uh, flourish this year. Uh, Unisam, uh, due to the chip, uh, semiconductor chip is on the shortages. I think they are also on a rising path as well. Um, healthcare, I like Optimax. Um, I think later on I'll discuss more about that. Stock exchange and trading platforms, you can look out for BUSA, and to end EFOS, and defensive play. I think these are some of the places you can actually put your money into, uh, just in case you want uh, high dividend yield stocks and you don't want to think about so much of, of the, uh, uh, the share price. I think uh, Zulian is one of my picks. Uh, for uh, dividends. Uh, if you like uh, Zulian, I think uh, you also can consider HiO uh, under the MLM related uh, direct sales company. Uh, BB Plastic and also uh, all these are actually uh, some good strong dividends, uh, above 5% dividend use. So I will put in here just for you to take, take note of. Okay. So some of you would have asked, hey, Asia financially not stable, how to invest in a such company? Um, yeah, I, I would say that uh, there are a lot of, you know, question marks to invest in Asia, uh, but uh, based on what we can see uh, in, in terms of their execution path uh, over the past one year is that they are trying to diversify in terms of their business. Uh, they, they can't really fly. I mean, uh, they can't really fly is because of COVID. It's not because their management uh, is not executing much. Right. So after this year, what we are anticipating definitely will be uh, for uh, the travel borders to be uplifted. So if that is coming in uh, soon, um, we are likely to see more upside to it. Okay. So um, if you're not uh, confident enough in this company, you might want to put smaller portion of money, um, those money that can risk, but uh, you also don't want to, you know, uh, avoid too much of this because once it is being uplifted, then the share price rallied from one to you know one fifty, then you have lost out the opportunity. So I would say that uh, put some money into uh, this kind of uh, recovery team just in case they really uh, make an effort to turn around. Once the travel borders is being uplifted, then we can uh, see some good upside towards the share price. Okay. Genting Malaysia and how about Genting? Uh, so I think uh, both are all right, just that I like Genting Malaysia because it, uh, there is more certainty in it because they always pay dividend towards the Genting Berhad and uh, that is one point to it. And secondly is that it is being contained in Malaysia uh, as in Genting Malaysia is more of a, from the resort world. So, uh, so once the travel borders being uplifted, definitely the share price will jump based on that news. So I, I sort of have some certainty in what is the connection between right now until then. Uh, but Genting Berhad um, is everywhere. So if, okay, for instance, if there, there is lockdown in Japan, US, or wherever, then the share price will, you know, come down again. Uh, but I mean, both are good, both are as good, just that I, I have more certainty in, in terms of once the travel borders being uplifted, uh, I think both will run. Uh, Genting Malaysia will have uh, an additional impact because of the dividends that they are always been pay, paying towards the Genting Berhad. Okay. So, uh, yeah. 
Okay, so uh, I just want to give you some updates on uh, what has uh, what what have we uh, been uh, uh, recommending in first quarter and how is our report card for the time being uh, until March twenty six, uh, because we close normally one quarter by one quarter. So we have uh, you know give you some ideas to trade on uh, first quarter, and this is the average return of eleven point two percent. Um, overall, overall. So the best outcome is Optimax. Uh, we have um, we have an issue and uh, initiation on uh, coverage on this counter. Uh, we are putting a uh, fair value around two and five cents. Uh, but since uh, I mean during the time of uh, be, you know put in putting in Optimax is also because of the recovery pay. And uh, why do I say recovery pay is during COVID-19 period, no one wants to go to um, do their eye surgery because they are afraid when they're going into a hospital and not so urgent of uh, eye, eye operation, they would delay until next quarter or so. And uh, they have a lot of patients being delayed, you know, delayed until 2021 as well. So uh, 2020 is already over and 2021 should be a recovery year based on all those delayed and new uh, new patients coming in. So that will be a growth and also delayed. And that is that is a two, uh, two way to think about the growth uh, for Optimax. So Optimax is also one of the uh, eye specialists in Malaysia. Um, you know, Isaac is one of them, Top Vision is one of them. And, uh, and, and they are very niche in terms of their, uh, uh, in, in terms of what, what they're doing, dealing with. They're only dealing with eyes. Uh, surgery and eyes uh, sickness illness so it's not a full-fledged uh, hospital so if you want to compare the PE I think you might not be able to compare but they have been rising since 80 over cents until 160 170 right now I think they would deserve a much better uh, growth rate moving forward uh, if uh, I mean PE multiple should be uh, even higher uh, I think if you're comparing in the region or in Compared to the U, uh, China uh, stock market, their their PE valuation is around fifty to hundred. So I, I think uh, we are just pegging around thirty five times PE for Optimax right now. Uh, but certainly, um, first quarter we are you know uh, being saved by uh, Optimax. Uh, this is definitely a, a, the best uh, outcome that we have for uh, first quarter. Okay, so um, if you have not shared the video out, I think uh, you. You can share right now because right now I'll be talking about these topics and in terms of the share price movements and uh, technical analysis point of view. What uh, do I think, and what should be um, the price that uh, you should be looking at um, to take uh, you know take some position in it? So, uh, Air Asia uh, waiting definitely is just for the all international borders to be reopened and or the travel bubbles to be initiated. So uh, I think uh, around 95, you can see that yesterday's sell down was pretty bad and today it has rebounded around 95 uh, above to 102. And from this point, I think it, it has stabilized along this level. And uh, we, we should be uh, looking into further upside from this point. I think um, there is, uh, I mean, there is only upside to it, but again, you can also say that there is also downside to it because um, they are going to make losses uh, per, per, quad, per month will be around 300 million, to, you know, things like that. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a two-way thing, uh, but uh, based on the share price right now, I would believe that uh, the, the uh, people are looking uh, ahead uh, for the international borders to be reopened. So that's why uh, people might be buying around the 95 towards 100 level, uh, anticipation to hit, anticipating to hit around 130 to 140 level. Okay. Uh, Gilly Malaysia has been, you know, turning just sideways around the support, but it may also go down to 287 before recovering. Uh, so let, let's see how does it pan out uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but we, we can see some good support near towards the 305, 300 level. Uh, hopefully that it can sustain around three uh, towards three three one or three five two level for uh, Kenting Malaysia. Uh, bear in mind there are dividends to that. I mean, prospective dividends to, uh, will be uh, around four point five towards five point five percent for twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. Okay, Mister DIY, since the 
we have issue report. They have rallied from 377 towards, uh, I think, 418 level, and it continues to sustain sideways. This is a very strong uptrending counter. You can see that it has just been all the way up one way ticket uh, towards 4, uh, 418. I'm still looking into this towards. Uh, 450 level. Uh, even they are going going to Mr. Toy and Mr. Dollar. This is the, certainly a very interesting part that they can tap along with. Uh, if they can do it good, um, they can do it well. I think, uh, it, I mean, 450 is just a matter of time. Uh, and bear in mind this, uh, Mr. DIY is likely to uh, go into FM KLCI. So, uh, so that would provide some up, upper revision in terms of their valuations. Uh, Tongguan, I will still think that this pullback is uh, quite severe, uh, significant, uh, but it has also come to an, a potential end. Uh, this is just turning sideways and uh, we are going to monitor for a breakout to happen uh, above this uh, 2 ring at 59 cents level or even towards 2 ring at 86 cents. Uh, I, I am having a lot of faith in it because uh, they are, their bottom line managed to increase uh, during uh, during COVID year, and also they have net cash of 38.7 uh, cents. Uh, their PE is very uh, cheap compared to the rest of the plastic makers. Uh, so 11.4 versus 16.2. I think uh, that is something to uh, take note of. Optimax, after we have issued uh, the report, they have uh, came down, uh, came down towards 160. Hopefully it can sustain around this 160, 150 level. And uh, hopefully they can rebound towards two ringgit and two ringgit 10 cents. Uh, we believe the um, uh, adding on with uh, the surgeons uh, in 2021 would help them, you know, give them some advantage to getting more patients. And uh, getting more patients means more revenue uh, for them. And that would uh, translate to earnings. Um, so that is where we are coming from. I think uh, they also management said that they are roughly getting around two to four uh, surgeons uh, in, in 2021. Uh, and bear in mind, they are they are uh, uh, one of the uh, high specialists in town, and therefore uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, they are not a full fledged uh, hospital, so uh, they, their P valuations might be slightly different. Okay. BUSA, uh, it is due to the very vibrant average day trading value. Uh, we are looking at this as a positive indication of the upcoming results. But again, I have to, I have to caution you all is because over the past two weeks, uh, we have noticed some of the decline in average tra daily trading value around three to four billion compared to 5.515 billion year to date. Okay, year to date, um, that is uh, during 26th of March. So um, that is also part of the worrying part, but uh, overall, if we can again hit around 5.15 in April and also May, then uh, perhaps there should be some upside to Busan, Malaysia. Okay, Jack's resources, the power plant and solar business. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, very interesting. They are going to tone down in terms of their construction, uh, or, sorry, their, their mall, shopping malls, the Evolve uh, concept mall. And uh, they have already gotten their LSS4, which is uh, already able to provide them with some decent recur recurring income moving forward. Power plant, it will be starting uh, from 2021 and that will last them for 25 years. So the case study is quite similar to um, uh, Megafirst. Uh, Megafirst, uh, during the time they have um, completed um, their power plant, and then they started their power plant and then the share price fly uh, strongly. So I, I would assume that uh, Jack's resources have done uh, most of the kitchen sinking uh, last quarter and uh, that should help them, uh, you know, contribute to a, a positive, uh, positive recovery year this year. Okay, so next one will be Oka. Oka is dealing with the drainage system as I mentioned. They have been uh, paying more than, uh, you know, uh, more than 10 years in terms of dividends and around three to four cents dividend. Um, two, one, at the start, it's around one to two cents, then two to three cents, then I think recent years was three, three to 3.5 cents. So uh, that indicates around 5.4% dividend yield or near to four to 5% dividend yield. And I think there is a lot of upside to uh, this company if construction is booming again. So I guess um, we are targeting around uh, 0 0.87 to 0 0.93. 
uh, since our report has been out, it has already been up around, uh, you know, seven uh, percent. Okay, uh, net cash stands at around uh, forty six point four. That is very amazing. Around uh, net worth twenty four percent of the share price. Okay. Hashtag, uh, they have outstanding order book around 2.2 billion, uh, which can sustain them around two to three years. They are also related to uh, all these rail um, electrifying uh, rail. Uh, so they are related to rails and tracks as well. So they power up, you know, all this. But recently they, are, they have all, all also ventured into these uh, EV chargers, electric vehicle chargers. They have been setting up in, uh, you know, Putrajaya, Cyberjaya places. So I think uh, it is very scalable. It's easy to you know uh, scale up their, their potential into the regions because they are already in the regions uh, like Vietnam, Cambodia, and things like that. So uh, I think uh, it could be something that we can take note of, just uh, tagging along the EV trend out there. So share price has been uh, quite supportive near towards the one ring and four cents. Despite yesterday's market sell down, uh, it did not sell so down uh, severely, but instead it has been recovering slightly above. Okay, so uh, I think uh, 143, 151 is the midterm target that you can actually look out for. Okay, so um, as of today, um, based on the report date share price, it has been tanking quite much uh, in terms of the some of the counters such as you know, Air Asia. And uh, the, the average return is around negative two point five percent. But I, this is uh, for quarter uh, perspective, and also you can actually always buy prices much lower than my report date pr share price. Uh, these are the counters that I foresee that has a, a huge potential in second quarter, and um, certainly you can always buy lower than the report date price. And um, if you're interested uh, to know more about more details, you can actually look into our report. A report uh, uh, for, for this strategy report. So um, this has come to an end. I think uh, we can take some questions. And uh, I think uh, there are some questions that I didn't, uh, I, I have, uh, maybe I have missed out. Uh, I will read through some of the questions here. How about REITs? Uh, looking up in 2020, your comment on Inari and also what do you think about making back? Okay, so I will take one by one. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can just put into the uh, the, the comments uh, section. I will just browse through and randomly uh, pick a few of them, and then I will just uh, you know uh, comment about it. Um, I will just take around five to ten minutes to you know browse through the question and answer uh, you all right now. So reads, I think uh, since last year, uh, a lot of uh, reads counter has been coming off. Uh, this year itself uh, should be a recovery year for them because if you think about a uh, broad-based recovery uh, when consumers are going back to malls, shopping malls will reopen and they have more sales and that sales will tra translate to REITs, uh, earnings and things like that. So um, they they might not be able to get rental reversion. That is uh, quite, quite sure because last year it has been hitting them quite badly. So they can't ask the tenant, hey, hey, Give me more money uh, for my rental. I'll uh, up you uh, another you know, uh, 5%. I don't think they can really do that. Um, but uh, in terms of the revenue itself, it should, uh, I mean, in terms of the sales itself throughout the malls, it will definitely go higher compared to last year. Okay, may may not be higher than 2019, but at least higher than 2020. So for RGB read, you know, Pavilion read, KLCC read, all these are related to malls. Okay. These are also related to the travel borders. Once you know travel borders is being updated, uh, when tourists can come in, they can shop even uh, better in, in Malaysia. Uh, then uh, you know Pavilion Read, KLCC Read will definitely benefit uh, from it. So uh, so looking into 2021 for REITs, I think uh, it is also a recovery year. And uh, if they can at least recover to you know uh, better than 2020, uh, definitely the dividends will be much higher. Okay. Okay, and comment on Inari. Uh, I think Inari um, share price has been reacting. I think today, generally itself, uh, technology stocks has been reviving. Um, as long as they are still having an uptrend in that position, what do I mean by uptrend in that is that uh, share price must be above SMA 50. If they are above SMA 50, you can find a spot to enter uh, on a consolidation phase, then a breakout, but you buy into it. I think it should be a problem, okay? That wouldn't uh, hurt you too much. Uh, I think um, 
all these counters are related. I mean, uh, technology stocks will continue to survive through this pandemic. And uh, just that one question is that whether they can beat their previous earnings or not, because during February, they have a very strong earnings. So that could consider as their peak of the earnings. So if you want to beat the peak of the earnings down the road, it would be tougher you know, for them to beat. So uh, if they can't beat, then that is where the sell down phase might come in. So what I'm thinking right now could be similar to 2018. If you have fo uh, generally focused on uh, our you know, slides earlier on, 2018, March uh, fall and April recovery and towards uh, uh, May itself, it started to pull back again. So for this year itself, we might be having the same situation because of February earnings is very stellar. And if they, they, they can't really beat in uh, May, then perhaps, uh, you know, the sell down phase might come in. Okay. So um, other than that, uh, May Bank, I think banking stocks will recover based on GDP. If GDP numbers are growing, then uh, May Bank, I mean, banking stocks should be rebinding. Um, this few days, much too much bad news regarding Air Asia and there even value it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Some, some of the brokers out there value it at five cents. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not covering them fundamentally, so I can't say much. Uh, yes, right now it seems like really, really bad for them because uh, bad for Asia because they can't really open up the, their flights. So, uh, but in the anticipation of opening up the borders, uh, I think that is an angle to it. So, um, I would say that uh, more towards uh, that that point, uh, that part of uh, opening up the borders and they would fly uh, in terms of share price because I think uh, Tony Fernandez is uh, quite a good um, uh, quite a good uh, businessman that could uh, able to um, uh, uh, do some uh, fundraising yeah, quite easily and uh, that would help them to sail through at least another uh, two quarters okay so if they can actually sail through another two quarters i think that could help them to survive until the vaccine uh, smoothly roll out and also the uh, opening of borders okay hmm okay glove sectors okay i i think i shall you know not talk more on glove counters i think everyone would know about glove counters they i mean everyone know, knows that they have a lot of uh, solid earnings uh, solid dividends but why share price is going to continue to go down so uh, there is a lot of uh, perspective to it because a lot of people have made money since last year 350 right now uh, four four ish 450 still people can still sell and make money so that is that is why people are you know, still offloading their shares because uh, more sellers are there in the market and that, that's why the share price has been coming down. So moving forward, I think the, the only idea about uh, you know, glove counters could be only um, mild growth, mild growth and also uh, dividends. Uh, that is very attractive. So this on, on these two grounds, depending on where you want to buy it, uh, they definitely have a, a solid earnings. They definitely have a solid dividend. So depending on where you want to buy it. So if you want to buy it right now, yes, you may buy it. If you want to buy it, maybe later, you can also buy it. So uh, I would always wait for uh, the price stabilize and then uh, try to move up. Okay, then only we will uh, monitor again. But right now, it seems like it is on a downward trending path. I think um, we shall not uh, focus too much on that uh, for now, okay? Uh, another one uh, would be, yeah, comment about DNEX. Uh, DNEX, uh, take over Silterra. I, I believe that uh, today there is a minor sell into news, but it is not a heavy selling. I thought it would be more severe, uh, maybe sell down towards 80 cents, but it did not. So I'm taking that as a good sign to say that if right now uh, they did not sell too much in the news, meaning to say that they are still strong holders in it and uh, trying to uh, you know prop up the shares even higher. So around 90 cents would be uh, waiting for the price to break out. And our, our next target, if there is a breakout, next target would be around the one ringgit towards 105. Okay, so that is my view on Sutera. Any hope on for steel counters? 
any hope for steel counters? I think uh, steel counters is tied strongly with um, with the uh, first of all the results uh, they have been uh, pointing towards a very strong recovery. But whether this recovery can sustain for long, that is another question mark. Because when steel bar prices is so expensive, uh, will contractors buy into them or they will wait? Okay, if they wait, then you know the, the things subsides and the, the steel prices subsides. Then maybe that that would be the peak of uh steel uh, related counters uh, asp so i i think uh, uh, it is too cyclical and uh since that they have read it so much uh if you are if they are still holding above sma 50 then uh, that is where you can uh, monitor but if it's below sma 50 then i i think i would advise you to um uh, put uh some stop loss to it and uh, take profit once uh, it hits it triggers your stop loss okay Okay, another three more minutes. I will just uh, talk about three more minutes uh, on the Q&A section. Uh, Tarwin UWC, I think Tarwin has some news recently uh, related to EV as well. Uh, perhaps this counter can also be one of the counters that uh, trade uh, on the near term, but uh, you, have to, you have to run once the, the, the trend has uh, started to turn. Uh, for now, I, I can only see that 45, maybe 45, 46 cents is the stiff resistance, but uh, support would be near to us around 40 cents. UWC tagging along with the automation trend, uh, technology counters still uh, will, will likely to survive. Solar energy, I, would, uh, I think just now I've explained the power generation mix. Uh, the one to, uh, government wants to increase from 5% to 20%. Power generation mix uh, for the renewable energy. So that is where the growth will be coming from. What is your opinion on revenue which involved in e payment and online payment? Uh, I think uh, there is a lot of room to grow in terms of revenues, um, revenues, revenue, uh, because of uh, this uh, during this period, uh, a lot of people are shopping online. They, they also take along the uh, online payment as well. So revenue has that particular. Uh, particular business segment to it caters, caters to it so uh, online shopping and online uh, thing will also boost their uh, transactional uh, in income uh, so I uh, assume that has that that has uh, I mean revenue has a good outlook in terms of that but whether you are paying a very strong uh, high PE to it and then it's another question mark so uh, based on the share price I think today there is a breakout there is a breakout um, I, I think it can sustain for another few more days uh, but uh, until maybe two ringgit and then you have to trail your profits all the way maybe to 250 or even three ringgit so depending on how you are trading your profits but outlook is definitely decent for revenue because they are also having the retail payment gateway which, which means that when you go and uh, you, you go to the shop, shop lots out there, uh, where, where, wherever they have the, uh, the uh, credit card uh, transaction terminals, uh, they are also having some cut into all those transactions. So basically, they, they manage to capture all those uh, in, in terms of their earnings. So what how uh, this recovery would uh, also help them because when um, shop lots are open up, uh, when more transactions are being done, uh, they will benefit as well. Okay. Okay, uh, I guess that would be it uh, for my session. Uh, it is 8.45 already. So I'll go through my last slides. I've taken all the uh, most of the Q&A uh, section. And please follow us on social media. I think uh, we have Facebook, we have Instagram. We have just launched our YouTube and Plus Online TV. And just check it out, check it out. Because uh, most of the, uh, uh, most of the contents there are uh, some uh, updates for you uh, on, a, uh, on a weekly basis and uh, you should be, uh, if you can't really read the reports, uh, maybe you want to go through the MPLAS online TV just to uh, listen to our reports or listen to what our commentators have to uh, comment for that particular week, okay? And follow us on LinkedIn, uh, Malacca Security, Sanya and Berhan. Okay, so that has come to an end for this session. Thank you so much for the time. It has been a very worthwhile uh, one hour and 45 minutes uh, session today. And I hope you have, uh, have a great session uh, tonight and hopefully you have a good trading quarter ahead. Uh, thank you so much.